So I was recently called a heretic because I said that I believe that confession is necessary for salvation, that you believe the gospel and that you confess Jesus Christ as Savior. So I just want to expound on what I mean by this. So the gospel is found in Romans to me, the God, I, we see the gospel in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So then the question is, if we don't have to confess Christ in order to be saved, why would the Bible say that we have to confess Christ to be saved in Romans chapter 10? And just after verses 9 and 10 the Bible says, for, whos for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So you're not going to be ashamed to confess Christ if you believe on him. Verse 12 says, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Then verse 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's that calling again. Now, maybe some would say, well, chapter 10 isn't written to us. Well, very clearly in verse number 12, God distinguishes and says, hey, look, there's no difference between the Jew and the Greek. The, for the same Lord over all is rich upon all them that call upon him. So clearly God is saying here through the Apostle Paul that this is for everybody. This isn't just for the Jew. This isn't just for the Greek. This is for everyone. God makes no distinctions. If you call on the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. So I want to just read to you something that a friend sent me concerning this topic confession means to declare or say aloud it means to say aloud what is on your heart or mind for the lost person it encompasses admitting the condition of one's one being lost realizing that jesus is the only is only able to save and the outward admission of believing in him the heart believes but the mouth states that belief outwardly confession is extremely important for the lost and for the saved matthew ten thirty two says whosoever therefore shall confess me before men him will i confess before my father which is in heaven so i think what jesus is saying here if you're not willing to confess jesus christ as your savior then god will not confess you before him because uh, the next verse obviously says he him that denies me before men him will i deny so i think there's a very important thing in confessing philippians 2 11 through 10 that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess. There's that confession again, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the father. So every tongue will confess. So if a person says that they believe or, uh, you know, they yeah, just say they believe it, but they will not confess. Do they really believe? I don't think so. Luke 18, 13 says this, And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. So what did he do? He confessed. He said, God, be, be merciful to me, a sinner. So he confessed his sinful state. He confessed his belief in Jesus Christ, right? And God. So throughout the Old Testament, the belief, the, the people always had to confess then they came, when they came before God. Psalm 32, 5, I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. So we see David often confessing. Confessing God. In the book of Genesis, we see that the Bible says that then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So men were calling upon the name of the Lord all the way back to the book of Genesis. Because salvation hasn't changed, folks. It's always been by faith. And it's always been about calling and asking for that gift of salvation. You see, salvation is a gift. It's absolutely free. Because Jesus paid for it when he died on the cross and rose again from the dead. But here's the thing, you have to receive that gift. And Romans chapter 10 clearly tells us how we receive that gift, and that is by believing and receiving. Okay? Simple belief is like the James 2 belief. The devils believe. Okay? The devils believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. They know it's true. It has to go beyond that belief into confession. 
So you're believing on Jesus Christ, and then you're asking for that gift of salvation. If your pride stops you from asking Jesus to save you, you're not saved. If you say you believe, but you're so prideful and arrogantly, my Bible says in Romans 10 that for the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So if you're too ashamed to call on the name of Jesus Christ, according to scripture, you don't believe. Because God says, if you do believe, then you shall not be ashamed. So you won't be ashamed to do what? Well, in the context, calling on the name of God, calling out to, for salvation, admitting, hey, I'm a sinner. Hey, I'm hellbound. But Jesus, I need you. I need you to save my soul. I believe you died on the cross and rose again for my sins. I'm putting my faith in you. <clears throat> First John 1 John 1.9, if we confess, there's that word confess again. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So you think if we just thought about our sins, you think that's good enough? You think God will forgive us if we just, well, I'm just going to think about them. I'm just going to think about how bad it is. No, God wants us to confess. There's something biblical. When you look at the examples in the Bible, how does everyone get saved in the Bible? They confess. The thief on the cross, what did he do? He confessed. He didn't just think to himself, well, you know, all right, I believe Jesus. Yeah, I believe he's the son of God. So I believe that a true belief will always result in a confession. If you truly believe, it's always going to result in a confession with your mouth. A confession with the heart. The Ethiopian eunuch, what did he do? Does he simply think in his mind that he believed? No, he had to state it with his mouth. He confessed it. He said, what hinders me from being baptized? In verse 37, which is conveniently removed out of most every Bible version that there is other than the King James. He said, what must I do? What doth hinder me to get baptized? And um, Philip essentially told him, hey, you have to believe on Jesus Christ. And he said, I believe. He confessed it with his mouth. He said it with his mouth. Um, <clears throat> so I think it is important. I cannot get away from confession in the Bible. If you think that you can simply, in your head, believe and think to yourself, oh, I believe that, I'm saved. I don't think that's salvation. There is a heart belief that results in a confession. You know, and I was in a live, and I can't remember who said this, but someone was like, oh, what about people in jail who get saved and no one ever talks to them and leads them through a sinner's prayer? Now, I don't believe praying a prayer saves you, right? It's not what I believe. A lot of people can repeat something and it means nothing. So if you repeat some prayer, that's not salvation. It is a sincere prayer from the heart. Um with that coupled with the belief, right? So people say, what about people in jail? No one leads them in a sinner's prayer. I hear people getting saved in jail all the time. Here's my answer to that. I work in a jail ministry. I've worked in a jail ministry since 2018. Every single person, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this, every single person that I've met in jail that got saved in jail by reading the Bible, by getting a gospel track, without an outside party leading them to Christ, has told me, that they cried out to God when they got saved. I mean, they cried out. They fell on their knees. Not that you have to fall on your knees, but man, they cried out to God and asked Jesus to save them. Do I think that they would have gotten saved had they just read it and thought, hmm, I believe that. No, I don't. I think that they had to call out. So unless you can somehow cut out of the Bible, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13, and the many other passages that speak of calling out, then I don't think you can get around that salvation is not confession, confessing Jesus Christ as your Savior, asking Jesus to save you. I don't think you can get around that biblically. Now, if you want to try to prove to me otherwise, if you want to show me examples in the Bible of people getting saved without confessing, I mean, go for it. Show me. The only thing I see... I see one or two examples where Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. But here's the thing. Jesus knows the future. He knows what they would have said. He knows their thoughts. So I feel like that's an anomaly because Jesus declared them righteous on the spot by what he saw and what he knew. But outside of Jesus, I don't think you're going to find any examples of people getting saved without confessing, without speaking it out of their mouths, without asking Jesus to save them. You see, you haven't received the gift of eternal life if you don't ask for it. And I think the only thing that would stop a person from asking is pride. That's it. I think pride is the only thing. And I think God knows that. God knows. 
in his infinite wisdom that if someone simply just says that they believe but they're not willing to confess Christ, they're not willing to ask Jesus to save them in some way, shape, or form. And again, it's not some magic prayer. It's not some specific words per se. It is belief. Yes, you believe Jesus in Christ. And then you say, I think of Peter. Peter, he confessed it with his mouth. He said, Whom do, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He confessed Christ with his mouth. I could give you example after example of people that got saved, not by thinking it in their head, but confessing it with their mouth. It's biblical in my belief system, what I believe the Bible teaches.